Hello and welcome to part three of Let's Create a 2D Platformer in the Godot Game Engine. In this tutorial, not so mini series, we'll be creating this 2D platformer video game. Of course, in this game, you can walk and run and jump and fall while you control the player on screen using keys on your keyboard. Of course, you can collect coins and squash enemies. You can lose lives, shoot fireballs and collect keys and unlock locked doors and do wall jumps, all that fun platformy 2D game stuff. This is tutorial part three of this mini series. If you've not seen part one and part two, in part one, I introduce you to the Godot editor, the Godot game engine. We talked about the interface of Godot, how you build scenes and games and physics simulation in Godot using what are called nodes. And in that first video, we constructed a simple physics scene with falling blocks and a floor. In part two, we got into making our game character and we started programming in Godot's native programming language called GD Script. We made our character be able to move when you press the left and right arrow keys or the A and D keys for WASD on your keyboard. In this video, we're gonna focus on up and down movement. So gravity and jumping and falling. So let's go ahead and open up our Godot editor. Of course, if you like this video or if you learned something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel grow and get seen. I really appreciate it. And if you wanna see more videos like this one in Godot or in Blender or in technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click the bell icon to be notified when I upload a new tutorial. So we've got our main level one scene open, which is called level1.tscn. And if I press play scene, well, well, of course, we've got our little game character. And if I press the right and left arrow keys or A and D on my keyboard, he moves left and right. And that's because we programmed it. If I want to see my little character's code, well, of course, my scene is constructed over here in the scene dock using nodes. And this is a node tree. And I've got my Steve character here, which is actually not just one node, of course. It is an entire scene. Steve is an instance in the scene. And you know that because this little symbol here of a little movie clapboard with a down arrow is there. And that's how you can quickly get to and It'll actually, when you click that, open up your other scene in tabs here. So you can see all of Steve's nodes and his code. Of course, you can also see his code by clicking on this little script icon here as well. And that will jump you over into script workspace. So in this video, we're going to add gravity. Of course, before we do that, I want to introduce a new idea. And that is the idea that you don't want to keep numbers in the words, just static literal numbers in your code. I'm going to go ahead and make my workspace maximize so we can see all our code. We don't want to keep these numbers. When I press the right arrow key or D on my keyboard, I move my velocity.x or I set my velocity.x to 100. And when I press left or the A key, I set my velocity.x to negative 100 to these two numbers. But if I want to change these numbers to make my character move faster or slower later in my game, I don't want to have to change two separate lines of code just to do one thing. So I'm not going to use literal numbers in my code. I'm going to make what's called a constant. And a constant is the exact same idea almost as a variable. A variable is like var velocity. It's a way of naming a piece of data that you're storing in your computer. But a constant, when you make it, I'm going to make one right here above my function. I'm going to call it const. And what that means is that it's a constant, but a constant is something that you cannot change throughout your game. You set it before your game runs, and when your game runs, it has that piece of data, but it can't change it over time. So if you're collecting coins in your game, you would want to make that a variable because as you collect each coin, that variable's value changes over time as you play the game, but a constant never changes. You set it and then you forget it. So let's go ahead and make a constant called speed, and I'm gonna make it equal to, I think 100 is too slow, so I'm gonna use 180. So now that I've got that constant, and notice how I wrote this in uppercase letters, Generally, that's standard in programming constants. You use uppercase letters. You'll see that later in this video as well. And now I'll type here, instead of 100, literally, I'll type speed. And when I press left, I want to go negative speed. And that works. Okay, negative and then the value 180. So now if I press play scene, well, now I'll move faster and it still works. And I still slow down to a stop. Okay, so now we've been modifying our velocity.x, but we want to move up and down. And of course, according to middle school math and the Cartesian plane, which uses x and y, and because we've been using a vector 2 for our velocity, which has 
an ordered pair, just like middle school math, which has an X and a Y value. We're going to use the Y value to control how fast we're moving up or down. And one thing to keep in mind is that when you have a 2D game like this, this corner of your viewport rectangle is zero, zero. And so if you move to the right, of course, you're going to get to a bigger number all the way up to 1024 by default, because it's 1024 pixels wide. If you move to the right, your X position or your X velocity should increase as you move right and negative or decrease as you move left. Up and down is a little bit funny because as you move down, your Y position or your Y velocity should be increasing. That means down here is, I believe it's 600 pixels tall and here is zero. So as you move down, you're getting closer to 600, which means you're going to need to add to your Y velocity or make your Y velocity increase positively to go downwards. It's a little bit funny, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my script workspace at, at the top. What I'm gonna do is before I move and slide, because this is the method that actually does the moving, I'm gonna say, so I'll type some code here, I'll make some room for myself. Velocity dot Y is gonna be equal to 30. Okay, what this line of code is gonna do is set our Y velocity to 30, and then because this code is in our game loop, we're going to be telling 60 times per second for our character to be moving down at a rate of 30. Let's go ahead and see what this does. It'll actually make our character look like it's moving down. <laughs> it's moving way too slow, and it does not look great because my character is falling at a constant rate. In other words, 60 times per second, my character is just being pushed down 30 pixels. Okay, actually, I believe this is 30 pixels per second. That's how this velocity uh, value works when you're using it with move and slide. So it's not moving 30 pixels 60 times per second. It's moving 30 pixels per second. So keep that in mind. We don't want this constant rate, right? Because if you start up here, if we move our little Steve character, I'll use my arrow tool and move him up to the top. He should start falling very slowly. But as the game progresses, he should fall in bigger increments and therefore be moving faster over time. So you speed up until you reach terminal velocity, really. Uh, but we're not going to get there in this game. So how do we do this? Well, in my code, this is going to look a little bit funny if you've never programmed uh, before. What I'm going to say is velocity.y, my up and down speed, should equal itself velocity.y plus 30. Now, this is a weird way of saying this, but what this line actually says is take my velocity and add 30 to it. And it's going to do that 60 times per second. Now, let's actually think about this. When you have an equal sign, this equal sign is not equals. This is called the assignment operator. It takes whatever value that you have on the right side of the equal sign, and it calculates that if it's got math in it, like addition, and then it assigns it into the variable that you have on the left. So this is a piece of memory. So at the beginning of the game, my Y velocity is equal to zero. And so the first time my game loop runs, it's gonna make my Y velocity equal to zero plus 30. And zero plus 30 is 30. So it'll take this value and it'll assign it into my velocity.y and then it'll move me by that much on the Y axis. Okay, one sixtieth of a second later, it's gonna see this line of code again and say, okay, take my velocity.y, which is already 30, and add 30 to it. So 30 plus 30 is 60, and it'll take that result, that value, and assign it 60 into velocity.y. So as you can see, velocity.y is gonna change every time the game cycles 1 60th of a second. So then velocity.y will be 60, it'll move me 60, and then the game will loop again 1 60th of a second later, and then it'll make velocity.y equal to 60 plus 30 and then that will be 90. So it'll assign 90 into my velocity.y, and it will continue. So my velocity is going to increase over time, which is how gravity actually behaves. You actually keep falling, and your rate of speed increases downwards. So let's go ahead and see what this plays like if I play my scene, and my character will fall. And that looked pretty good. If I stop my game from running, and I move my character up higher above my game frame, he'll still fall. And he'll land, but he'll be moving faster by the time we see him. There we go. And my character lands, and I can still walk left and right, or move left and right with the arrow keys on my keyboard, or A and D, and it's good. But there's a problem now. And I'm going to illustrate this by just putting my character back in my scene. I'm going to move my floor up and over a little bit. 
uh, so I have some room to fall off, and I want you to see what happens. So I'll play my scene. The floor is now in the middle. I just fell and landed. Okay, I can walk around. But watch what happens when I fall off the edge now, now that I've been standing on the ground for a few moments. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Whoa! I shot off like a cannon downwards, like really fast, much more fast than is natural. I was expecting just to fall off and then start falling nicely again like I fell from the beginning. I'm going to do it one more time. Play scene. I'll fall. I'll wait a sec and then I'll fall off the edge. And as you can see, I rock it downwards. So what's happening there? Well, in my code, I've got, oops, in my script workspace, I've got a variable named velocity and it has a Y value in its ordered pair and 60 times per second, I'm adding 30 to it. So it's going to be 30 the first time it runs, 60 the second time it runs, 90, then 120, and pretty soon it's going to be up into the thousands really quick within like a second, it'll be up into the thousands. So Every 60th of a second, though, we're using that value to move our character downwards. But this move and slide method also handles collisions. And if you have two objects that collide, like your character collides with the ground, therefore your character stops moving, this is the method that actually does that. This handles the collisions in a physics simulation with physics objects like our character and the floor. The problem is this move and slide method doesn't tell our velocity variable, velocity, that it stopped our character when our character hits the floor. So this velocity variable is kind of dumb. It's not being informed about what's happening with our move and slide. So as our character falls, of course, its velocity is increasing, but when the character object hits the floor, move and slide handles it stopping and so our character is not going through the floor, but that velocity variable in the background is still counting up 30 times or 30 more every 60th of a second. So if I were to actually look at my velocity variable as my game is playing, well, you would see that it's still clocking up and we can actually do that. Before I move and slide, I'm gonna use that print method from the last video. I'm gonna type print, uh, round bracket, round bracket. This is how you can print out. I'm gonna have to minimize this for a second. This is how we can output to this output section on the screen and this helps us debug and understand what's going on in our game at any given time. So if I put velocity dot y, in the round brackets as a parameter of this print method, well, it'll print my y velocity out to the screen. So if I press play scene, you can see that my y velocity started out at 30, they went to 60, then 90, then 120. But if I actually go down to the bottom and it's still running in the background, you can see it's really, really a high value. And it's just gonna keep going because my game is still running in the background. Okay, it should be zero, right? Because my character is not falling at all. So how do I stop this? How do I tell my velocity that it should be zero when I've stopped and landed on the ground? Well, I'll maximize my workspace again and go back into script workspace. I need move and slide to report back. In other words, I want move and slide to return a value that we're going to store as an updated version of velocity back into velocity. And it turns out if I hold control and click on move and slide, which of course will show me this uh, code in the code documentation. So how this actually works. So control and then click on this. You'll see that this brings us to our kinematic body 2D uh, documentation. And then under move and slide right here at the bottom of its description, it says returns the linear velocity vector rotated and or scaled if a slide collision occurred. The keyword here is returned. So when a method returns information, what you can do, I'll go back to Steve's script, is you can assign the data that it returns to an appropriate variable. In this case, I'm going to say velocity because move and slide returns a vector two, which is the same type of data as our velocity. I'm gonna say velocity equals move and slide velocity. So move and slide does the moving. It uses this velocity variable that we've given it as a parameter as its speed. And we are returning the new speed, taking into consideration move and slides actions, including the possibility of it colliding with other objects like the floor. You don't really have to understand this line, but if you got a sense of it, that's a good thing, especially if you're new to programming. So if I go ahead and run my code, if you want to pause the video and get caught up, I'm actually going to get rid of this print method call. If I play my scene, you'll see that if I hang around on the floor for a moment and then uh, move over, well, my character nicely falls 
off the floor. Okay, so now we've got working gravity, although if I play my scene, we can't jump yet because we haven't programmed that. So let's go ahead and do that. Back into my script. If I add to my velocity, if I want to fall downwards, how do I move upwards really quick? Well, I need to assign a key to my keyboard to an action, which is going to be the space bar in my case. But we're going to make our Y velocity become very much negative. In fact, I'm going to use something like negative 900 or 1000 or perhaps negative 800 or so. And that's going to be assigned to the space bar on my keyboard. So I'm going to go up to my project menu and project settings. We're going to add an action here, just like left and right from the last video. So project settings, and then we'll go to input map. This is where I added left and right in the last video. I'm going to make an action called jump. Hey, that's appropriate. And I'll press add and it's down here and I'll press the plus and I'll add a key to it, which binds a key to the jump action. And I will press a key on my keyboard, the space bar and press OK. So now we've got an action called jump bound to the space bar. I'll press close. Now, right before my character moves and slides, I'm going to program with a conditional statement if input with a capital I dot is action and I'll use the same one is action pressed from before for left and right. So I'll use my arrow keys and press enter. And then we're going to use this new jump action. Great. If I press the jump action button, the space bar, I'll put a colon and then I'll press enter. What do I want to do? Well, I want to make my Y velocity. So velocity dot Y, I'm going to make it equal to a really low number or a high negative number. So like negative 800, 900, negative 1000. I'm not going to type that number in here because I'm not going to want to put a number right in my code, which makes me realize I got one right here. So I'll fix that too in a moment. I'm going to make a new constant called jump force and uh, I'll make jump force equal to negative 900 and I'll play with that value in a moment. Before I test this out, let's change this. I don't want to use 30 in my code. I'm going to make that number called because that's the one that pushes us downwards. I'm going to make a constant called gravity and I'm going to make it equal to 30. Okay. So now I'll push down 60 times per second with gravity. Okay, and I'll use negative uh, jump force or just jump force because it is a negative number. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. If you need to pause the video to get caught up on the code, please do that now. But I will play my scene and it'll run. And if I press the space bar, hey, I jump. There's a problem here. If I jump and then I jump again in midair, well, I can jump when I'm not even on the ground. And I can press and hold the space bar and I fly which is not a good thing. I don't want to be able to fly. So there's two problems here. The first problem is I want my keyboard button press, my space bar to have to be pressed individually. So I don't want to be able to hold my space bar down. And that's an easy fix. If I go back to my script, um, I'm going to change this from is action pressed to is action just pressed. Okay. And that ensures that I have to let go and then press it again because this action will only fire or be triggered when I press a button and then let go. And as I've just let go of it, then it'll be uh, triggered to run and therefore I will jump. So now at the very least, I can't press and hold it and I have to press, I have to let go and press it again, but I can still jump and then I can jump in midair, which is not a good thing. So in order for me to be able to jump, I need to have to press the space bar on my keyboard or the jump action key. And I need to have to be able to check to see if I'm on the floor, because if I go back to my script, well, this line of code is not enough. This is not enough to be able to jump. I need to say if I'm pressing jump and I'm on the floor, then let me jump. Well, it turns out we can do this. This input dot is action just press jump. This what I have highlighted right now is a true or false statement. The user is pressing the jump action on their keyboard. This is, in other words, a Boolean expression. But what I can do here is I can make the check to see in order to jump. I can make this a compound Boolean expression. That means I can use the word and and if I use the word and I have to put a second true or false statement next to it. And we're going to use a method to do this to check to see if we're on the floor called uh, is on floor. And this is a method call that's built into, so I need to have round brackets because it's 
it's a method call. This is built into a kinematic body 2D. So if I hold control and click on the, the code there, kinematic body 2D, it'll take me to my documentation. If I scroll down to my method list, you can see that we've got move and slide, of course, but we also have is on floor. And this does exactly what you think it does. It makes sure that your character isn't moving downward at all. So they're, they're resting and it makes sure that they're touching another physics body like a static body. So they're on a solid ground. So I'm gonna go back to my script in case you need to update yours. I'm gonna leave that on the screen for a second, but let's go ahead and play our scene. And if I now jump, it doesn't work, but I can still move left and right and I can still fall, but jumping has been disabled because we don't know in our game yet which direction our floor is facing. In other words, if I wanna make a game where my character falls upwards and our whole scene is upside down and you fall onto the ceiling, well, Godot doesn't know in the game which direction your floor is facing. Now, if you think about it, the direction of a floor, how would you define that? Well, that's actually done using a vector too. If you wanted to say which direction is upwards, well, you would probably say the up direction is not anywhere to the left or to the right. So you would probably leave this X value alone at zero. But if you are pointing upwards, well, that would be a negative number on the Y value. So you would say zero comma, and then probably something like negative one. So zero negative one would define upwards as the floor. It's kind of a weird way of doing it, I know but just kind of roll with it. It's how you define the direction of a floor in Godot. Now, it turns out that you actually define this. Where do you say where the floor is or which direction the floor is facing? You do that in this move and slide method call. This method doesn't just necessarily take one parameter like we've been using so far. If I hold control and click on it to see its documentation, it can take one, two, three, four, it can take many different parameters. They're pretty much optional except for the first one, but the second parameter is an up direction. And so we're gonna define that now. In our Steve's code, in that method call, we're gonna put a comma, and then I'm gonna say vector two dot, and then an uppercase up. And this is uppercase because this is a shortcut. This is a, a constant that defines a variable that is set to zero comma negative one. If I hold control and click on vector two to see its documentation, you can see a vector two has an X and a Y, of course, but a vector two also has methods built in and constants. One of those constants is called up. And so up is zero negative one. If I go back to Steve's code, that should be all that I need. We've told move and slide to uh, use a velocity to move, but also now which direction is up. So now is on floor has what it needs. If I press play scene, I can fall, of course. And now if I press the space bar, I can jump, but I have to be on the floor if I try pressing the space bar many times. Well, I can't jump in midair. And of course, if I jump, I can fall and I'm just gonna keep falling forever. Okay, so our scene pretty much works. If I wanna now make my level a little bit more interesting, what I could do, and I'm gonna minimize my workspace, what I could do is I could make more platforms. So I'm gonna select my floor and I'm gonna use my arrow select tool and move my ground to about there. I'm going to rename my floor by double clicking floor one. I'll press enter. I'll now right click on it and duplicate it. And so now I've got floor two. I'll minimize that uh, node branch, and I'll move this floor up a little bit. I'm not quite sure how uh, much I can jump or how high I can jump, so if I put my platform too high up, I can't reach it, so I'll put it right about there. And this is where I get to test my game and adjust those constants. If I don't think I can jump high enough for my game, or if I think that I'm moving too slowly left and right, well, and I can't reach that platform there, I think maybe I should be able to. So I'm not jumping quite high enough. Maybe I think that I'm falling too slowly. If you fall too slowly in your game and then you jump and you're just kind of drifting a little bit and then you slowly fall, it'll feel like you're on the moon, which is kind of a floaty kind of a feeling, which is never good in a platformer. So I suggest that you maybe turn up your gravity a little bit higher than you think. But recall that if you turn your gravity up, that will push quicker back down when you jump. So turning gravity up will actually make you jump less. So 35, maybe I'll change this to negative 950 for my jump force. So now if I play my scene, I fall a little bit faster and I'm jumping about the same because I turned it up a little bit, but maybe I want negative 
you know, 1000 uh, for my jump force. So now if I play my scene, if I jump, I can't quite reach it. But you know what, I think that I will move my ground, my upper platform down a little bit. So I will try that out. I'll play my scene. I'm falling pretty quickly. I'm landing on the ground. I'm able to jump. There we go. I'm just able to get to that ground. So you know what? Maybe I'll change my jump force to negative uh, 1100. Okay. So one last time. I can jump. I can fall. I can fall off the edge. And I think that will be pretty much it for this video. So I'll leave my code up at the end of this video. But of course, if you like this video or if you've done something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel and it gets the word out about these tutorials. If you wanna see more videos like this one in the Godot engine or in Blender or technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click on the bell icon to be notified when I upload a new tutorial. Check out my Facebook page and my Instagram page now. In those places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. So if you want to follow me there, that would be amazing. But that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.